Hello fellow sim racers and welcome to part 2 of this sim racing setup guide. This video is all about tyres and how compound, pressure and temperature are probably the most important part of a car's setup. If you've not seen the first part of the series then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. Tyres Easily the most important part of a car setup, but often the most overlooked. Almost every aspect of a car setup is designed to change the way that the tyres interface with the road surface, so I can't overstate just how important it is to get the tyres working well before you start worrying about any other aspect of a setup. Tyres are, on the face of it, pretty easy to get your head around, especially in racing sims, and for the most part there are only three things you need to think about. Compound, pressure and temperature. Compound is a way of describing the chemical composition of the tyre, but from a driving perspective it's often just used as a word to describe how soft or hard the tyre is, while temperature and pressure are interlinked and both play a significant role in getting the maximum amount of grip out of the tyre. Before we get into the detail, here's one massive caveat. The way that tyres are modelled by sim racing developers varies massively between sims. So the tyres in any given sim, or indeed different versions of the same sim, may behave very differently. Some sims are incredibly sensitive to tyre settings, while others have a very wide operating range, and it doesn't seem to matter all that much what your settings are. So the following opinion on various aspects of tyre setup is fairly general, and is based to some extent on real world best practice. In my experience, it works in all of the sims, but the degree to which it matters very much varies from sim to sim. Let's start off by looking at pressures. As I mentioned earlier, tyre pressures and temperature are interrelated, and both have an impact on the amount of grip the tyre generates. A pneumatic tyre can be inflated to varying degrees to provide different characteristics, and a tyre inflated to a higher pressure will have stiffer sidewalls, providing a more responsive feel, but potentially at the cost of grip. Similarly, a tyre that's inflated to a lower pressure may generate more grip, but will provide more rolling resistance, and generate more heat, but more on that later. Simply put, getting the tyres into the right pressure window is instrumental in extracting all of the available grip from the tyre, as well as preserving tyre life. The key thing to remember here is that changing the pressure in your tyres alters its profile, which consequently changes the amount of rubber in contact with the track, and generally speaking, a bigger contact patch means more grip. So, up to a point, lower tyre pressures provide more grip, but this also generates more heat, decreases the tyre life and can impact handling, fuel efficiency and speed due to increased rolling resistance. Like almost every aspect of car setup work, it's all about compromise. In the real world, tyre manufacturers will provide a spec outlining the ideal pressure window for the tyres, and frustratingly that's not always the case in racing sims. For example, Assetto Corso uses a hidden lookup table of ideal temperatures and pressures, and that should really be something that you can see in the user interface. Thankfully, members of the community have made this available and I've put a link in the video description. Tire pressures are impacted by temperature. So, when we're talking about tire pressures, we're really talking about the air pressure in the tires when they're at racing temperature, or hot temperatures for short. And it's important to note that this is impacted by both the track and atmospheric conditions. So generally speaking, tire pressures need to be set on a case by case basis. Most sims require you to change the pressure of the tires when they're cold, as you would in real life. So that means that the pressure you set while the car is in the garage will be lower than its on-track operating temperature. And as you start to drive the car, the pressure will gradually increase up to the tyre's working temperature, and it's this number you should be concerned with. While we're talking about temperatures, depending on the tyre compound and track conditions, it may take several laps for the tyres to get up to their operating temperature and therefore their operating pressures. So make sure you run a few laps at racing speed before you start looking at the numbers. As I mentioned earlier, it's not always obvious from a racing sim what the optimum tyre pressure should be. So, depending on what you're driving, you may have to do a bit of googling to get the answer. But this optimum tyre pressure really should only be taken as a starting point. You may find that running 1-2 to two psi lower than the supposed golden number provides faster lap times, and as with everything, experimentation is the key. Moreover, since tyre pressures have a direct impact on handling and critically on feel, you may find that you're more comfortable with a car running slightly softer or harder pressures than what the data says is optimum. For what it's worth, my approach is to try and run the lowest tyre pressures I can get away with, though it doesn't always work out that way. Something else that's worth considering is that you don't necessarily have to run the same tyre pressures in all four wheels. 
and this is one of the tools you can use to alter the balance of the car. For example, you may try to decrease the pressures in the front tyres to try and dial out some understeer in the car. This is something that's particularly useful mid-race where changing the tyre pressures at your pit stop may be the only tool you have at your disposal to alter the way the car handles. As a final note, most racing sims provide live tyre data as a form of UI overlay or app, as well as data back in the garage that will tell you your hot and cold pressures. So thankfully it's pretty straightforward to look at the data and make informed corrections. As with pressures, tyres have an ideal temperature range in which they provide the most grip. And driving with tyres outside of this operating window will not only produce slower lap times, but also usually decrease the life of the tyre. So, keeping tyres in the right operating window is an important part of racing, both from the perspective of setup and driving style. The latter is beyond the scope of this series, but when it comes to setup, there are a few things we can tweak to keep the tyres at the right temperature. The most common is adjusting the tyre pressures, but you can also adjust the toe and camber angles of the wheels, which we'll discuss in the next video. Tyre temperatures are heavily impacted by track and atmospheric conditions. On a cold track, you may find it difficult to get your desired compound of tyres into the right temperature window, while on a hot track, you run the risk of overheating the rubber. So, as with pressures, temperatures need to be monitored on a case-by-case -case basis, and there's no one-size-fits-all setting. Heat across the surface of a tyre is rarely even, and generally speaking, the inside edge will run a little hotter than the outside. As such, readings are taken on the inside edge, middle and outside edge of the tyres, often referred to as IMO. Depending on the car and tyre type, it's not uncommon to see a disparity of up to plus or minus five degrees from the middle temperature, and that's not really a problem. However, if the difference is greater, then you may have other setup issues, which we'll talk about in later videos. Unlike pressures, you can't directly alter the temperature of the tyres by moving a slider in the setup window. So if you want to alter your tyre temperatures to make sure they're operating in the correct range, you'll need to either change your driving style, alter the tyre pressures, or make other setup changes. Altering your driving style may work in some situations, but it's not ideal. So the best place to start is with tyre pressures. As I mentioned earlier in the video, pressure has a big influence on tyre temperature. Lowering the pressures will generate more heat, and conversely, raising them will generate less. So, finding the right balance between tyre pressures and temperature range is pretty much all there is to it. As sim racers, we have a lot of data available to us in our user interfaces and on-screen overlays. And it's pretty uncommon to see a driving game that doesn't include a live readout of your tyre temperatures, including the breakdown of the inside, middle and outside temperatures. Thankfully, they've all standardised on using an intuitive colour temperature system as well. Blue is cold, green is good, and red is hot. So it's very easy to see what's going on at a glance. The final piece of the tyre puzzle is compound. Tyre compounds vary between cars and between racing sims, but generally the same rules apply. At its most basic, softer compounds provide more grip, but wear out much faster than harder tyres, while harder tyres are slower, but will last longer. The hardness of a tyre also has an impact on tyre temperatures, and generally speaking, harder tyres take longer to warm up than softer compounds, and vice versa. You may find it impossible to keep soft tyres cool on a very hot track, or heat up hard tyres in the depths of winter. So choosing the correct compound is a compromise between grip, range, and track conditions. Ultimately, you're looking to choose the compound that will produce the quickest time over the duration of the stint that you're running. So if that's a one lap qualifying, then grip is your biggest priority. But in a longer race, ultimate pace may have to be sacrificed in order to select a compound that will last the distance. So, to sum up, balancing tyre pressures and temperatures will ensure that your tyres are producing the optimum amount of grip without sacrificing tyre life. And selecting the correct compound for the track conditions and session format is the key to going as fast as possible over a given period of time. In the next video, we're going to talk about toe, camber and caster angles, and the impact they have on the handling and stability of the car, as well as how they affect tyre temperature. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.